Hi Year 12s, it's Mr. Lim here again with another video, video number 6 on uh, redox. It's now about galvanic cells, we're just going to learn about the structure of galvanic cells. Okay, so learning about galvanic cells, we're going to be able to identify and name parts and the functions of those parts. Uh, we're going to be able to also predict the direction of the electron flow and then be able to draw some galvanic cells. So what are galvanic cells? Um, so displacement reactions, what we learned in the last video, is when electrons are transferred directly from atoms to ions, so when they collide with each other and when they're in contact with each other. However, if you can force the electrons to pass through something else before reaching their destination, you can make that flow of electrons do work in the form of electrons, uh, electrical energy. Okay, so what they're doing effectively is separating out the two reactions and forcing the electrons to travel through something else. So. A galvanic cell is a type of electrochemical cell which can force electrons to pass through an external circuit, so that's the something else, and do work. It is also an important tool for working out the standard reduction potential of various substances, and we'll learn about that in the next video. Okay, so a galvanic cell is composed of four major parts. It's two half cells. So here's a half cell here, and here's another half cell here. Okay, so each half cell contains the reductant, and the oxidant for a substance. So this one here has X and X plus AQ, okay, and the X solid, the metal and the metal ion. So they're the matching metal and metal ion. The metal undergoes oxidation, so therefore it is the reductant, all right, and the metal ion is the oxidant, which will undergo a reduction, okay? And then you have the opposing one, which is the Y and the Y minor, uh, Y plus as well. Okay, so both half cells contain the reductant and the oxidant um, for that particular half cell. All right, and we'll learn about why that is later on. Okay, the, then we have electrodes. Okay, so what are the electrodes? The electrodes are these things here. Okay, so they can be the reductant for metal half cells, so they can be made out of metal. All right. Or they can be an inert, which means they don't react, electrical conductor such as graphite or platinum. Okay, so the electrode is effectively a surface for electrons to flow through from one half cell out of the solution here or stuff like that, <coughs> out through the electrode, through the external circuit, which we'll learn about in a moment, and to the other electrode. Okay, so the electrode. They act as an area where electrons can flow, yep, so they've got to be conductive of electricity, and a site for reduction and oxidation to occur. One is the anode, where oxidation can occur, all right, and this is the anode in blue, okay, the anode, and the other is cathode, where reduction occurs, okay, so anode is oxidation and cathode is reduction, okay, and it's important to just remember that anode is oxidation, cathode is reduction because it's consistent along all different types of cells, which we'll learn about, and that never changes, so it's the best thing to remember about it um, if you want to remember stuff. Okay, so the electrodes. Then we have the external circuit. So the external circuit here in yellow, okay, is this part here. It's where the electrons flow from one electrode to the other, all right? Um, you can have voltmeters here, you can have light bulbs here. It's effectively what you put there uses up the energy from this flow of electrons. Okay. And then finally, you have the salt bridge here. Okay. This salt bridge, which is this entire U shaped, upside down U shaped thing there. Okay. The role of the salt bridge is to ensure that the electrical neutrality is maintained within the galvanic cell. So it's usually a filter paper, uh, which is saturated with unreacted solutions of ions or ions that don't react with the components of that half cell. Okay, so let's have a think. If the electrons are flowing from one side to another, that means this side is getting more negative because it has more electrons. And this side is getting more positive. Okay, if these are getting more positive and more negative, as this half cell gets more negative, it's going to eventually start to repel the electrons that are flowing in that direction. So to prevent this getting too negative, the salt bridge allows positive ions to flow into this solution to counteract the electrons that are going there as well. Okay, then the opposite of this one, 
on the left hand side this is getting more positive as it loses electrons okay eventually if it got so positive it would start pulling those electrons back so negative ions flow into this particular half cell there okay so negative ions are called anions and they flow towards the anode and positive ions are called cations and they flow towards the cathode all right so its role is to ensure electrical neutrality is maintained within the galvanic cell and it's an important piece of vocabulary to use if you're ever talking about salt bridges okay um okay next so the galvanic cell creates a flow of electron in the external circuit because the structure of the galvanic cell separates the reduction and oxidation reactions and forces the flow of electrons through the external circuit so remember at the beginning we were talking about uh, displacement reactions having the electrons pass through directly from contact between your oxidant and your reductant okay this one here is forcing them to separate via the external circuit if the components of the two half cells were combined instead of separated a direct redox reaction would occur and you would have a displacement reaction okay and so the flow of electrons through the external circuit in the galvanic cell is always always for galvanic cells from the anode in one half cell where oxidation occurs to the cathode in another half cell where reduction occurs and if you think about it that makes sense okay because oxidation is the loss of electrons okay and if you're losing electrons that means the electrons are flowing out of you okay and then they're flowing into this side here okay and that's the gain of electrons which is reduction okay so always away from the anode always towards the cathode okay um the idea is that because you've got the oxidant which is this one and the reductant which is that one there in both half cells there is always going to be a reaction one of them is always going to be able to pull electrons from the other uh, and therefore there's always going to be a flow of uh, electrons here okay that's why these galvanic cells work let's move on okay then ions in the salt bridge flow to balance out the charge that's what we talked about before okay it's maintaining what electrical neutrality okay um, again because of the electron flow as the electrons flow this way it must balance out that negative by having positive ions flow into that side and negative ions flowing into that side okay so that is galvanic cells this is really just about the structure of them and we'll go into how they work in our next video on the standard uh yeah, standard reduction potential table that's it